let's have a conversation, shall we? Um, first of all, welcome to my broadcast. This is episode number 977. And they're going to talk about the Super Bowl. Uh, in particular, the halftime show, because there's been so much on my social media feed about this. And yes, I know I'm the guy speaking about this, but I've got to talk about it. It's because if you watch my broadcast, you know how much I'm, about, I'm passionate about supporting women in their feminine. So, where do I begin? I don't want to start with the first time, halftime show. I want to speak with more about the whole thing in, in, in general. I mean, you know, the Super Bowl is the most expensive time expensive time slot on TV for advertisements. So all the commercials they show, sometimes they're amazing. And sometimes they suck. And sometimes they are displays of monetary wealth. So I'm not going to get into that one too much. <laughs> and pack up that can of worms. And the game itself, I mean, the whole thing about the game, there's still issues about the fact there's head injuries and everything else. So Super Bowl, football period, it's like, that's another piece. But everyone seems to be focusing on the halftime show, which is not everyone, excuse me, everyone. A lot of people in my news feed are commenting and responding to the halftime show. And it's interesting because the people I know who are my friends, women especially, are speaking in the direction I'm going to go in, which I'll get to in a moment. And there are also some that come from the other side of things where they're much more averse to what happened. In fact, let me put it in black and white. Some people are extremely upset with what happened yesterday, with the way the women displayed themselves and everything else on the halftime show. I understand that, and I appreciate it as well. There are a couple of moment, couple of things in particular, basically the crotch shots, where I would say extremely not ideal things to put on camera when you've got kids watching, when you've got other people watching, and people who are very prudish watching. There's a range there. However, everything else... Yeah, pretty much everything else in the halftime show, I was absolutely cheering on, applauding, enjoying, turned on by, and loved. I think that's pretty much covered. that covers the gamut, I think. Um, there were so many pieces to the puzzle, and I've been reading up, doing a lot of actually re reading about what happened, what the each of the different um, performances, performers. I mean, in fact, that, okay, let me start with this way. The fact it was in Miami and it was a Latin flavor was a wonderful change. In fact, and some of the shows, that some of the past halftime shows have been pretty weak, to be blunt. So this one was filled with fire and fury and feminine authority and, and drama and action and everything else too. It was great. Both J-Lo and Shakira were amazing in their acts. Period. So I can end the show now. Done. All right. <laughs> but there's more to it than that. I was reading up, I mean, I, I know that Shakira is a... Um, has two more, is not just South, South American. She, I think she's Colo Colombian on her foot. She, she's half Lebanese, half South American. I forget which country to be on. Uh, sorry for that, I don't, I don't remember the actual country. I think I want to say Colombian, I could be wrong. Anyway, so she has both origins. So, and because she was paying tribute to the, and let, let me just tell you this because I read this, I'm blown away. The, the, the city she was born and raised in is the most populated city in her country of African origin people. I think that's right. I believe it's right. So last night in her act, or yesterday in her act, she was actually doing, she had first of all, she had a lot of African American or African dancers front and center in her troupe, in her group dancing. That's one thing. Secondly, they did some dance moves, which I didn't know at the time, so I'm not, I'm not up on this stuff. I had to read about it to find out. They were doing so many dance moves that were were in honor of that culture, so I felt very I felt um, appreciative of what she was doing to actually bring that to the audience. The one thing that stood out for a lot of people, which is there've been memes about this stuff coming out, where she was where she got her face in the camera and was wagging her tongue in the camera. That wasn't profanity, that wasn't silliness, that was cultural. Again, she's half Lebanese, and in the Lebanese culture, that is a it's almost like a ululate, a ulu, if I can say it right, ululation sound. She was actually doing something attributed to her culture. It's a historic, it's a ancestral thing for her. So it has importance, it has value. In addition, um, J-Lo, in her act, you know, she climbed up a pole and pole dancing. That's something that a lot of women I know who teach what pole dancing are fanatics about, and I'm passionate about them doing that because it, it helps women connect back to their femininity. So people say, she shouldn't do that, it's a stripper pole, it's bad, it's this and the other. Well, yes, some people, some women and some men use that pole for that purpose. But the assumption that she's doing it for that purpose was inaccurate, I believe. Another piece of that was, 
she, I, there was actually an interesting article. Someone said that um, because she, they may have done that pole dancing piece in the, in the in a show because she got snubbed for an Oscar nomination for her movie Hustlers. I don't know if it's true or not, but that was kind of funny to see that. But the truth was, both acts, both acts, and both women. I, I mean, at the end of it, when they came together and were basically dancing together down the aisle between the other the two sets of dancers they were uh, had, it was such a moving moment because I saw them just like collaborate in sisterhood in in cooperation and thrive in their energy and that that was eternal that was that was juicy that was actually so uplifting i was loving it and it was probably the best way they ended the show was that way and for me the whole thing this the whole time halftime show first of all there are certain people who are watching who watch the whole halftime show and the one two things they focus on were the two times that the camera got right up in their crotch now whether that was their choice or the cameraman's choice, or the director of the camera's choice, we don't know. So to presume that the thing was ruined by that is a gross mistake. What they did or didn't do, I feel basically the whole dance they did was was a thrilling and exciting experience of what they were up to. And both of them, I mean, come on, um, Shakira's 43 or 45, and JLo's 50. That's friggin' awesome, frankly, the women who are you know, in, in past times, looked, for, looked upon as being older now, mature women shouldn't do this sort of stuff, and are kicking butt, taking names, and thriving in the dance on the dance floor. Way more energy than most of us can carry. In fact, a lot more power than a lot of 20 year olds can do. And that's something to be proud of and, and in awe of, personally. So, all of the stuff that happened in the dance, I personally think, was great, except for those two things. But again, some people are fixated on just that instance where the camera was right up in their crotch. And I agree, that wasn't appropriate. But I don't know if that was necessarily J Lo and Shakira's fault, in quotes, or just some male director who got really um, overexcited. I don't know. But as a whole, personally, I feel like the whole show was a lot of fun. And yes, some, some people are going to hate what I said, some people are going to love what I said. A lot of women who I respect deeply have said the same sort of thing I've been saying here. It's like rock on, powerful, excited. These strong women who are both over 40, J Lo more over 40 can carry this show off with such exuberance, such energy, such vitality and sexiness. It's empowering, I think, for most, for most, I think it's power for all women. And it's a workout called to men to get out of the way. <laughs> That's another conversation for another time. Um, so that was one of the pieces about the Super Bowl that was very powerful for me. Now, speaking personally, um, I wasn't really, I was kind of leaning towards one, one team versus the other because I live in California. But I wasn't really that fanatic about it. As I said before in other talks, um, I'm not a massive American sports fan because I grew up in England, so my English, my, my, fanat my fanaticism was left in England when I left there. So I believe in the real football sport, not the American football sport. <laughs> so I'm not going to get into that one too much. But the thing I want to say is that the Super, Bowl, the Super Bowl is quite an event. And collectively with everything in it, including the halftime show, including the performances, the players, the game itself, everything in it, one thing I'm aware of almost more than anything else, is just how much they push commercialism down our throats. Now, I'm not saying I can change that, but I notice that sometimes the purity of the sport and the purity of the movement, the purity of the dancing too, is overlaid by this thing about marketing hype all the time, which is unfortunate. But I am very clear that what happened yesterday in the halftime show, which I'll keep posting, because that's the thing everyone's talking about, was absolutely um, 95% amazing. Again, the one thing I know was a, was a letdown amongst everything that was so amazing with those two times that the cameras got up in the crotch of those ladies. Because that wasn't necessarily respectful for them or for the audience. But I also say that everything they did on stage, that both Bo Jalo and Shakira and their, and their dance groups too, was above and beyond. It was fun. It was exciting. They had a great time up there. They both enjoyed themselves, I'm sure of it. And they don't give a flying F about what anyone else thinks, which is always even more powerful. So the ladies... If you are feeling challenged by what they did, look inside. Where are you feeling maybe too held back, reserved, untrusting, or betrayed? By the way, it's another piece I forgot about. I think it was in JLo's performance. There was a shot in there, and I missed it when I was watching. I didn't watch the whole thing. I missed that. I was. I turned away. It was that there was a, a camera pass across? Well, I think it was supposed to be kids in cages, which was a powerful political statement. That was part of the reminders that what they're doing on stage is a protest about how things have been treated in the past. That what Shakira and J-Lo did in their dancing, in their 
um, expression was a wake-up call as well. So again, those people who are fixated on those two times the cameras got too close, step back and watch the whole thing. If you get a chance to watch the whole thing again and appreciate what happened, appreciate the different moves, appreciate what Shakira did as an act of service to her culture, not something silly or stupid, as some people have labeled it, you might start realizing just how amazing it really was. So yes, I'm a guy speaking about this, and I know a lot of women have been speaking about it on stage, and some of the guys I know have also posted about, posted about this on social media too. But I wanted to speak about it just because it's been bugging me all day. <laughs> so that's why I'm going to speak about it today. So if you've got any thoughts, comments about that, what you saw or didn't see yesterday in the halftime show or about the whole thing, feel free to put some notes in the comments. I don't, I'm, I've already had one uh, big debate ramp, um, uh, one's exploding, but expanding from a post I did last week that came out wrong. Um, a meme that I posted that got a lot of people, some, people, some women upset. Um, this might too. But you know what? I had to talk about it, so get it out there. So feel free to comment in the comment. Let me know in the comments if there's anything going on. If you're challenged by this and you're not, and I'm, this is a promo for my stuff, just to be clear, I'm be transparent. I'm going to do a quick promo here. If you're feeling that perhaps you are not as loving about this as you could be, I'm going to leave a link in the comments for my self-love meditation. That's it. Just a promo, just a little nudge, just to be sarcastic in a way. But if you really want to show how to love yourself more, check that out in the comments. Um... And yeah, what was your thoughts? How did you experience the halftime show? What was your, um, what's we're looking for? Reflection on it. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Did one thing stick out for you? Or did many things lift you up? Did you, what were you thinking? I'm curious. I'm sure I'm gonna hear about this later on from other people too, as they'd watch this later on. But I wanted to just, just get my brain dumped onto this to talk about it. Because overarching for me, Thank you. Hey, Alexia. Yes, I'm glad you loved it. And a lot of people, women did. Now, the thing is, I want to say this, just as a summary, because I want to wrap it up. Exactly. That was going to, you, you took the words out of my mouth, Alexia. <laughs> it's empowering for women. What they did was so blatant, thankfully, and real about the power women have to lead, to celebrate, to take charge. If, well, ladies, if you're watching that and you didn't get that, watch it again. And men, if you weren't watching that, you didn't see that, time to step up and notice how powerful women really are. Because you know, if you watch my broadcast over the last three years, my perpetual message is, ladies, you're more powerful than you know. This, this talk and the conversation about yesterday's um, halftime show is an absolute reminder of the fact that, ladies, you're more powerful than you know. That's what my, my, my messaging is about. That's what I'm going to be talking about more this year in, on stage. That's also a focus of mine this year. It's my intention to be speaking on stages and to bigger audiences because it's time that men spoke to women in that respectful place too. Was that Alexia? Owning their bodies, their talents, their sisterhood. Yes. Um, yes, I do get it. Thank you. And yes, you do too. So thank you for watching this broadcast and for commenting. I appreciate that. And feel, feel free to share it out. I'm, I'm willing to be subject, subject to people's responses. <laughs> This could, be, this could open up a whole can of worms. And then again, it could open up a lot of comments, comments too. But as I said, I am... Um, thank you, Alexia. Appreciate that feedback. Um, that's really what I would say, just, just really to speak in support of what happened. Uh, or I should say, in support of the women that, that led yesterday's halftime show, both J-Lo and Shakira. I'm, a fan, I'm, I'm not a fanatic for their work, but I'm a fan of what they did. And I'm in mean, applause and, and support and honoring what they did because frankly what they did was a great show and a great message so hopefully this has touched you in some way and you've got some thoughts as well um this is my daily facebook live not not my this is not my usual talk in a way although it did touch into some things to talk about but i do this every day and if you haven't joined my broadcast before you find me on my personal page which is barry selby on facebook every day seven days a week usually at 5 p.m pacific time on my personal page you can join me anytime you want well, you enjoy me the day you want, <laughs> every day. Um, I do also have my um, recordings, or I should say my replays, saved to my business page on Facebook, which is barrysilvey.author. Um, there's about 200 of them, maybe 300. Facebook doesn't save all of them visually. They're in there, but they're not uh, visible. So as a backup plan, go to my YouTube channel. And my YouTube channel is youtube.com slash user slash barrysilvey. Please subscribe to my channel and on there is a playlist on called Messages for the Masculine. You can see every single one of my broadcasts, all 797, excuse me, 970, got them transposed, 977, including this one, for you to peruse and watch. The link in me in the comments again for the self-love meditation, because that will help you clarify your own relationship with yourself. If you're not loving yourself enough, start now. 
And uh, that's about it. I thank you for watching. I appreciate you being with me. And uh, as always, thank you, Alexia. I appreciate that. And as always, please, take care of yourself. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.